There's a scene in, the, in this part two where she's talking about how she realizes what's happening, how she's been fed to the wolves. And mm-hmm. she, her friends are calling her up saying, Meg, they're not protecting you. They're not protecting you. Now, Maureen, as a person who's been in the press quite a bit in my career, often negative, sometimes positive, um, I, I have had people in my life who do this, who are like the, oh, I'm so sorry. Are you okay? Are you okay? And I learned pretty quickly as, in my career as a public figure, just write back to my friends, don't do that. I don't need that. I don't read press about myself for this very reason. Like the press is going to do what we're going to do. I'm part of it. I have a foot in both camps, so I get it. But I don't want your condolence texts, right? Like that's, that doesn't help. She doesn't have the maturity to understand that. What, in fact, to this moment, she's repeating it on air with Netflix in an effort to make us feel sorry for her. Mm-hmm. And th- this was supposed to be her aha moment of, wh- of how like she needed to fight back against this evil palace. This is how the game works. Well, I, any seasoned journalist is like, you know what? Maybe the palace did dish dirt on them to, to deflect off of William and Kate. I actually, I think a lot of British journalists are going to say that's not true. I kind of believe it. And I don't care. I, I don't care. This is how the game works. Exactly. It's the cost of doing business. So what is Megan? You, you can't be such a savvy, sophisticated, independent, rule-breaking maverick figure while also being a total victim who doesn't understand how the game works and needs her friends in Hollywood to tell her that she is being taken advantage of by a, a, a media that she depicts as, a, as monolithic, as, as moving in lockstep, which you and I both know is just completely, it, it's, it's to even feign that level of naivete is mm-hmm. ridiculous and a gross miscalculation. You know, my mm-hmm. other favorite thing about these two and their their media tour over the past couple of weeks, and you're so right, too, about having, you know, a foot in both camps. These two have a foot in both camps. You can't, you can't castigate the media for being so barbaric to you and then go and cash checks from the biggest media entities on the planet. Right. Checks that are meant to pay for your family secrets and your personal torments and everything you're supposed to hold sacred. But last week, when they were at the RFK gala getting honored for standing up to quote unquote institutional racism, one of the star columnists at the Daily Mail went right up to Gail King and said, Do you believe that the royal family is racist? And she said, No, of course not. Alec Baldwin on the red carpet was asked, do you believe the royal family is racist? He said, no, of course not. So what are we all doing here? Right. They're still on it. Here's, um, okay, there, it's an author. Um, I don't, forgive me, I don't, I'm not familiar, but his name is uh, Kehinde Andrews. And he's talking about that oh, yet again in the second part, racism, racism, racism. And she talks about how she was just shocked, shocked, shocked after the Oprah interview when she told us all she was suicidal at one point. That was supposed to be the lead, Maureen, that we were supposed to mm-hmm. understand that was our lead. Mm-hmm. That instead, the biggest takeaway was she ac- accused the royal family of being racist. Well, hello. She knew very well that that was going to be the headline. She's not an idiot. Can't say I'm sure about Harry, but she's not an idiot. Uh, She knew what racism, that that was going to be the takeaway. Anyway, here's this author talking about, once again, this is all about race, the backlash against her SOT 5. So the UK is perfect at doing this, right? Nobody wants to be openly racist. That wouldn't be civilized and that wouldn't be British. Uh, But it's perfectly fine to kind of dog whistle, give a nod to. He's a diva. He's he's making people cry. This kind of angry black woman trope. He just really came came to the fore uh, really quite suddenly. Okay, I'm sorry. And I just say for the record, I've been called all that stuff too. All of it. I'm not black. I, I, it's like, and it's not even because I'm a woman either. I'm in the public eye. <laughs> she, she's in the public eye times 10,000. Like, why do they have to make it about color at every stage? And it's such a, a, a terrible um, condemnation and such an unfair condemnation of Britain itself. Of, you yeah. know, one of the most diverse countries in Western Europe, it's it's an, an unfair and untrue condemnation of the royal family, which by Meghan's own admission did nothing but fast track her in, welcome her in, try to get her to learn the ropes as quickly as possible. As we saw in the beginning of that series, the media was just lavishing praise on her as a as a breath of fresh air and the power 
that she and Harry would have had the kind of soft power, but real world power they could have had had they stayed. But their real issue, their real rage is that they would forever be second best. They would forever be relegated to number two. And they they can't have that. They can't they constitutionally cannot stand it, neither one of them. Oh, it's like but they just are tough it out. out tough it out. Like nobody I does anybody even remember that Prince Charles has like yet another brother? You got Andrew, and then you got the youngest one. I can't even remember his name sitting here right now. The brother of the heir leaves the news cycle eventually. I'm sure there was a lot of press about him. Like mm-hmm. eventually they forget about you unless you start hanging out with pedophiles like Andrew did, and then you're back in the news. And this was going to happen to Harry too. And according to Valentine Roy, this British author, author Harry was dreading it. He wanted to stay in the spotlight. Well, guess what? The bad comes with that good. It's the Christmas and holiday season. Time for gift giving, parties with friends and family, and getting compliments everywhere you go. And looking years younger everywhere you go, thanks to GenuCell. Millions of people love GenuCell's products. From now through Christmas, you can get them, and you can get them for a big discount. GenuCell's most popular package, that's all their best stuff, is 70% off. 70 at GenuCell.com. And there are other discounts, so you're barely paying for these products at this point. Treat yourself and a loved one to the absolute best skincare in the world. See those troubling forehead lines? fine wrinkles under your eyes, skin redness, pesky bags and puffiness, and even a sagging jawline disappear right before your eyes with Jenny Cell's most popular collection. I like the most popular things. Sometimes you don't know, like, what do I need? When I go, all these products, they don't make sense to you. You just get the most popular package and they've idiot proofed it for us. With its immediate effects product, you're going to see results in less than 12 hours guaranteed or your money back. And included in every most popular package is your free hyaluronic acid serum for skin hydration that will restore your youthful appearance. Visit JennyCell.com slash MK now. Enter my special promo code MK for an additional 10% off your entire order. Don't forget to say that. MK, MK, an additional 10% off. Every order today, instantly upgraded to free express shipping. Go to genucel.com slash MK60. That's G-E-N-U-C-E-L dot com slash MK60. Genucel.com slash MK60. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.